We have the report from Chris Rufo. He says that we have discovered that migrants are, in fact, eating cats in Ohio. He says we have verified with multiple witnesses and visual cross references that African migrants in Dayton, the next city over from Springfield, barbecued these cats last summer. Now, in this image, it's a TikTok from a year ago. You can see animals roasting on the grill. The response from the left from the corporate press is they look like chickens. They look like some kind of animal, I guess. However, the legs are pulled up. And so we'll go through this. As many people are saying they look like chickens. I don't believe uh, I, I, I'm leaning slight towards uh, cats on this one. Here's the video in question. I'll play it for you. Yo, what is this they got on the grill? Is that, did they kill some cats? Man, you hear the people who are filming. Did they kill some cats? Listen, man. They're going cat right there. His ass better get missing, man. Look like his homies are. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was good. His ass better get missing. The grill, man. What the fuck? Yo. So that's the clip. We have this from Chris Rufo, the Cat Eaters of Ohio. The establishment media called it a racist myth, but is it? Now, I will add, Chris Rufo's report on this is that one instance does not prove it's happening all over the place. It could be an isolated incident. There's no evidence they're eating dogs like Donald Trump said. This is just more and more evidence. Now, CBS News says not true. Ohio police dispute new allegations immigrants are eating pets in Dayton. Chris Rufo has responded, but let's start from the beginning. Now, of course, we know that Donald Trump shocked audience of debate by saying they're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. And we got uh, to our uh, great luck, an awesome song out of it. An awesome song with Hassan, Hassan Piker, the leftist screaming. Ah! And then like, nts, nts. it's fun. The statement, uh, he goes on to say the establishment media was not amused. During the debate, ABC's David Muir dismissed Trump's rhetoric with a version with his version of a fact check, citing the Springfield city manager saying there have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured or abused by individuals within the migrant community. Other publications went further, blasting the former president for spreading a racist smear, century old stereotype and a cat eating conspiracy theory. So is there a truth to the to the charge? We have conducted an exclusive investigation that reveals that, yes, in fact, some migrants in Ohio appear to have been eating the cats, though not exactly in the manner that Trump described. Our investigation begins in a rundown neighborhood of Dayton, Ohio, the closest major city to Springfield, about a half hour's drive away. This is important to understand. Springfield is a town just outside of Dayton, Ohio, just outside of, you know, an hour or so. We identified a social me a media post dated August 25th, 2023 with a short video depicting what appears to be two skinned cats on top of a blue barbecue. Yo, the Africans wild on Parkwood, reads the text referring to Parkwood Drive. The video then pans down to two live cats walking across the grass in front of a rundown fence. The voice on the video warning, there go a cat right there. His ass better get missing, man. Look at the, look at his homies on the grill. <laughs> Here's what's important. Rufo says they've confirmed this post is, is a year old, over one year old, well before the story went viral. Yo, the Africans wild on Parkwood. We spoke with the author of the video who asked to remain anonymous, but confirmed its time, location and authenticity. He told us he was picking up his son last summer when he noticed the unusual situation. It was some Africans that stay right next door to my kid's mother. This African dude next door had the damn cat on the grill. We then identified the home by matching it to the visuals in the video and cross-referencing them with eyewitnesses. When we knocked on the, on the door of the first unit, a family answered, telling us they were from the Democratic Republic of the Congo and that all the surrounding units were occupied by other African migrants. One of the residents told us that her former neighbors, also from Africa, had lived in an adjacent unit last month. They had a blue grill and the father would find meat in the neighborhood. Her dad was going to find meat, she said. Her dad was, was holding a knife. The current residents also showed us a blue grill of the same make and model in the video, which the former neighbors had abandoned after they moved out. There were at least 10 cats wandering around the complex, and another resident complained they were breeding on the property. According to the original witness, whose son was friendly with the neighbors, there was no doubt about what, what happened. They was barbecuing the damn cat, he said. His son's mother had previously witnessed the family butchering a mammal on the street. 
But the cats on the barbecue put him in such a state of shock, he felt the need to film it. To be clear, the single incident does not confirm every particularity of Trump's statement. The town is Dayton, not Springfield. Cats alone were on the grill, not cats and dogs. But it does break the general narrative peddled by the establishment media and its fact checkers who insisted that this has never happened, that any suggestion otherwise is somehow an expression of racism. It takes only a single exception, however, to falsify hypothesis. And the logical next step for any honest broker is to ask if it is happening more often and elsewhere. It is not implausible. Many developing nations, including the Congo and Haiti, have traditional animal sacrifice or consumption of what Americans would consider household pets. And if this occurred in Dayton, where the migrant population is relatively small, it could be going on down the road in Springfield, where it is relatively much larger. Independent journalists are already on the hunt and could reveal more. The Daily Wire has dispatched a reporter to Springfield to investigate. The Federalist has published a police report with allegations that a group of Haitians emerged from a city trail with dead geese in hand. Ohio's Attorney General Dave Yost has backed up this claim, arguing that citizens with such firsthand knowledge would be competent witnesses in court. There's a legitimate debate to be had about migration and culture. All immigrants bring with them a particular tradition, which in this case, in the case of countries such as Haiti and the Congo, can include practices that many Africans, I'm sorry, many Americans find disturbing. This cultural divide causes understandable consternation for non-migrants living in the rougher places, rougher parts of places like Dayton and Springfield. Now, according to CBS News, they're disputing this. This is uh, uh, from the same day at 1041 p.m. It was updated. They say police say there is there said there is no evidence that immigrants are eating pets, calling new allegations that emerged online on Saturday irresponsible. The police statement was issued hours after new video and an article alleged African immigrants in Dayton were seen preparing to grill dead cats. The claim was shared by Senator J.D. Vance. This is insanity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I get a little heated. But we literally have Chris Rufo showing a video from a year ago where a guy says they're grilling the damn cats. Cat better get missing. His, look at his homies on the grill. They interviewed witnesses and locals who confirmed the people were grilling cats. There's video of it. What more can we possibly do? You tell I, I, I honestly I can't I have no idea. We have now dozens of videos of locals in, in Springfield, Ohio, saying, yeah, they're 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 cooking cats. A video of a woman crying, saying it's not a joke. Why are you making fun of us? You don't know what it's like to wake up and see your dog decapitated. Then we get this from Chris Rufo. At the very least, strong indication it's happening. One instance does not make a trend. But the preponderance of evidence is clear. The story is more likely true than not. Though I don't know how you get more definitive evidence other than filming somebody walking up with high definition cameras, live streaming a guy who's grilling a cat at the time. The problem is, I guarantee you this. If right now the Daily Wire crew live streams, breaking news, guys, we're on the ground. Come here. They got cats on the grill. The media will claim it's staged and they're only doing it because of Trump. I don't know how else, how else you're supposed to deal with this. Now they're claiming it's chickens. Look, look like his homies on the grill. Oh, poor cat. <laughs> Yikes, man. They say the new allegation has prompted backlash and skepticism with many users saying the carcasses look more like chickens. CBS News has reached out to veterinary experts on their opinion on what type of carcasses on the grill. The people who were there, who were standing there and pulled their camera, you got a grainy camera that I get, but they're looking at it with their own eyes and they're like, that's a cat. And it's from a year ago. The best evidence so far. No one predicted that Donald Trump a year later would go up on stage in the debate and say they're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. So why would this guy fake it? Absolutely insane. Chris Rufo has responded. Saying CBS News has published a response to the Cat Eaters of Ohio story. It's a supremely dishonest and completely partisan report. But let's break it down to show exactly how the establishment media maintains its lines of propaganda. The CBS report hinges on two arguments. First, CBS writes, the video shows what appears to be animal carcasses on a grill. The man filming the footage alleges without evidence that they are cats. Without evidence, the eyewitness directly observed the incident and took a video recording of it, both of which are firsthand evidence. But CBS's apparent standard when such evidence violates the establishment narrative is don't believe your lying eyes without evidence. 
Witness testimony is evidence, not proof. Video is evidence, not proof. There's a difference, but evidence is there. The report also quotes Dayton's Democratic mayor, who says there have been absolutely zero reports of this type of activity, which is true, but does not contradict the evidence at all. Nobody filed a police report, so there would be no police report. And the absence of a police report does not mean that something did not happen. This is a convenient way of ignoring the evidence and laundering lies through friendly media apparatus. What did CBS not do? Journalism. The network, which has massive resources, did not send a report to the scene, interview the eyewitnesses, interview the neighbors, investigate the visual evidence, conduct background research, or provide a detailed analysis. They simply adopted the don't believe your lying eyes as their standard and repeated an empty evidence free statement from a partisan political figure. He says, now I'd like to take you through exactly how we produced the story and analyze the evidence. This is precisely the case that I made in the original piece that the establishment media is more interested in denial and obfuscation, even when the evidence points the other way. Sourcing. An individual in my personal social network reached out with a tip and a link to the social media post with video. The source neither requested nor received the monetary prize I had posted on social media a few days prior. Our team then collected the timestamped social media from August 2023, which was still live. We tracked down the author, authenticated the video, matched it to his voice, and conducted an interview by phone in which he confirmed the key details of the story. The following day, we had the author bring us, the lo- bring us to the location and make introductions. Had a team member conduct background research and sent a reporter into the field to make observations and conduct interviews. To confirm the exact location of the video, we matched the visual elements in the picture to the visual elements on the scene, down to matchmaking knot patterns in fence planks, which provided us with the precise address and camera position relative to the scene. For extra care, we also cross-referenced the visual evidence with street and satellite images plus residential property records. Our interview with the eyewitness matched the details of the original video and was unambiguous in its conclusion. This African dude next door had the damn cat on the grill. They was barbecuing the damn cat. The eyewitness was familiar with the African families in the housing complex. His son played their children. And his child's mother, who lived next door to the Africans, had observed them on at least one occasion butchering a large mammal on the street. The eyewitness had a close, unmeted look at the incident and maintained a consistent story over one year to multiple different groups, including his own peer group. He is familiar with barbecuing and like anyone is familiar with cats. The source of his initial shock was that the animal on the grill was not a chicken, burger, hot dog or other usual fare. Again, he witnessed the incident firsthand, recorded a video and maintained a consistent story over a year. This is all direct evidence contrary to CBS News' disingenuous claim. I will stress this, too, for Chris Rufo. Why would he film a video of a guy barbecuing chicken? Now, you, you, you go to the Asian markets in New York and there's chickens and rabbits hanging up. Nobody's going to go, well, they got chickens hanging up. But if you saw a cat, you'd be like, that's a cat. That's crazy to us. Our field reporter spoke with half a dozen people in the housing complex who confirmed the following details. All of the residents of the complex were migrants from Africa, most commonly the Congo. They were familiar with the eyewitness, witness uh, his child's mother and his son. They told, us, they told us another African family had recently moved out of one of the units. This family owned and used a blue grill. The father would go with a knife and gather meat. There were stray cats breeding on the property and some residents wanted to get rid of them. We also made the following direct observation on the scene. We matched the visuals in the video to the location. We found an abandoned grill that matched the make, model, and color in the video and the descriptions in the interviews. We noticed there were at least 10 cats on the property, which appeared to be strays and were very comfortable with the residents coming out of the porches and milling around the exterior of the house. Our research team learned that there is a tradition of cat eating in the Congo and surrounding nations. We also learned that since at least 2021, Dayton has accommodated a relatively large number of migrants from the Congo. By chance, one of our in-house researchers had experienced dissecting cats and studying their anatomy. In addition, we spoke on background with a chicken farmer, surgeon, biologist, hunter, and medical pro- professor. After some left-wing conspiracy accounts on social media began claiming the animals were chickens rather than cats, we asked them to provide their opinion. I will produce some of the conclusions, the quotations. The farmer, who has processed thousands of animals per year, confirmed that it could not be a chicken. Quote, the most obvious evidence is that the claws on the grill are facing the wrong way for it to be an avian creature. Size-wise, the only poultry in, uh, the only poultry could credibly be compared to is a Cornish game hen or something small, but the carcasses are much larger than that. Literally, any poultry farmer or butcher would tell you that's not a chicken or a waterfowl. So let's pull this back up. I'll pull up the, uh, the image. So you see the claws curling forward towards the body. The, the uh, chicken's feet are flat like this, and they curl uh, back the other direction. 
um, as a, a, a chicken farmer myself. Not really, but we got a lot of chickens. I, I agree with the assessment of this year, chicken farmer. The legs pointed up also uh, to me. I, I, I does not look. You guys have seen chickens at the grocery store. We have cooked chickens. We have gone to farms and picked up chickens. I feel like most people who have seen a fresh plucked ready, you know, a, a chicken like raw or like just you know, we'll call it fresh. The legs are hanging down. They don't curl up and bend like that. A bird wouldn't be able to rest upside down like that. Its heavy legs would cause it to flop to one side or the other, or the legs would just drop down to either side. There's no way for a bird to naturally sit that way. They're bottom heavy creatures. The legs are too skinny to be a chicken. The drumstick, even on a laying hen, would be much meatier. I mean, we all eat drum. We all know what drumsticks look like. Look at how thin that is. We've all seen drumsticks. You know what a drumstick looks like. It's not long like that. Those look like cats. They are basically claiming the two legs on the left are of a chicken and that its butt is somehow propped up in the air. First of all, why would it be propped up in the air? But more importantly, why would the drumsticks be stuck up in the air for a quadruped like a feline that makes sense? They are the front legs, but not an avian creature. It has one set of legs, a sort of folding joint in them. And, and we call those khaki bird legs that bend the other way. <laughs> if the bird were faced up as they are claiming, the legs would fold down into the thighs, not project straight up into the air. The feet of a chicken or a waterfowl are much larger in proportion to the carcass. This is a big, this is, this is absolutely true as well. Uh, take, I, 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 look, I look at chickens every day. Well, not in the past couple of months because Chicken City is being built, so we haven't moved them over. But I, you can hear me if you watch Chicken City going out and yelling at the chicken saying, yo, what up, RB3, buck, 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 or whatever. They got big feet. What a crazy story. I, gotta <laughs> I can't believe this is the news we're doing. So, OK, I'm not going to read every single quote about why these are chickens. The CBS News report is not credible and does not make any attempt to investigate the facts. Rather, it simply denied the witness eyewitness account and firsthand, uh, firsthand video as without evidence, a logical contradiction. And copied a statement from the Democratic mayor, who also did not investigate the matter. There is no indication that CBS sent a reporter into the field, conducted any interviews or provided any visual analysis. There is no indication that CBS even knows where the incident occurred. This is dishonest and does, not, uh, and does a disservice to, uh, to a productive debate. Independent says, clearly chicken, you weirdo. People respond to J.D. Vance sharing video he claims shows migrants grilling cats. I got to be honest with you guys. Um, it's a cat. See right here, the, the butt and the, the thigh. That's a cat. That is not a chicken. I, I feel like anybody who's brought, bought a whole raw chicken or even looked at a rotisserie chicken. Can I pull up a picture of a rotisserie chicken? I'm doing it. Let's do it. This is, this is crazy. This is absolute. Look, I just Google searched. Let me get a better picture. Let me get a large image. Uh, here we are. Here I am pulling up a picture of a chicken for every single human being who has literally seen one because we eat chicken every single day. Take a look at this. This is a chicken that's been grilled. Look at its thighs. Look at its legs. <laughs> you know what a chicken looks like. Now, here's uh, what, they, what the farmers call the vent. Where the chicken poops out of. Notice the legs aren't resting upward. We've all ripped a turkey thigh off. Look at the butt and the thigh. That's a cat. That is a cat. That's a cat, my friends. Look how thin the leg is. And I can't believe I'm showing you guys a rotisserie chicken to prove a point. <laughs> Yo, there are people who are trying to claim Chris Rufo did not have, have proof. It's absolutely wild. Clearly chicken, you weirdo. Uh, notice this. As, I, as, as the, the farmer pointed out, and I will point out, See how they have the legs sticking out like this? They're going the wrong way. As the farmer pointed out, chicken feet bend the backwards toward the back. And these are bending forwards. Also notice how they connect to the rear. Chicken's legs are off to the side of their bodies and there's a rear that sticks out. We all have had chicken before. It is clearly not a chicken. It is not chicken. If we're a skinned cat, why is the skin still very much attached to the thing on the grill? Has anyone, have you ever looked at, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up for you, okay? Pull up a picture of a grilled cat. Because there's videos of this stuff. Uh, 
American prepared teriyaki cat. No, that's not what I'm looking at. Uh, there's an image from Reddit. Let me see if I can find it. That shows what it looks like when you grill a. Oh, this is catfish. Minus fish. We don't want fish. We want cat. I guess they don't want to show you those images. Uh, let me do this. Eating cat. Haiti Reddit. Because there's a video. Now it's going viral. People being like, not true. Okay, all right. I'm going to have to do this. So basically, here's what I'm doing right now. You know, maybe I should do this in real time for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to any time. I'm going to go to custom range. I'm going to type in, let's just do 7 1 slash 2024. So this means nothing after July 1st will, will appear. I went to Haiti and was served cat. Here you can see the cat on the grill. And it looks like it has skin or whatever. You, whatever. I'm sorry, man. I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to criticize this culture or whatever. The question is not whether or not we find it to be morally reprehensible. The fact question right now is, are they eating cats? Chris Rufo seems to have definitive evidence they are. Now, let me tell you. You want to argue they're chickens. The feet are going the wrong way. Okay. The feet are going the wrong direction. They're curled inward. But I'll just tell you, if the guy who filmed the video a year ago said they got cats on the grill, that is strong indicator that it's a true story. It's wild because we all saw this coming, right? The, the, the possibility that, it, that it, the story was true was it was plausible, unconfirmed, but plausible. We know in Haiti they eat cats. Not very common is my understanding, but it does happen. We know that people who are starving, hungry, and poor will do what they have to do. We have this trope of hillbillies rednecks eating roadkill. Now, let me ask you this question. When there are jokes in media, TV, or otherwise, where the hillbilly guy is like, hey, Ma, dinner. I think Simpsons did it. Roadkill. They bring the animal in. They eat it. I don't understand. I mean, eating, eating a varmint, eating a raccoon or whatever, people do that. But the idea that they would eat something hit by a car is disgusting. And we mock that idea. So if there's another group of people who are impoverished or from undeveloped uh, or underdeveloped countries, and they're eating animals, it's not out of the question. This needed an investigation, not derision, mockery and lies. But that is what the corporate press does. It's what they've always done. And that's why people don't trust them. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to say, I don't believe we're going to get better confirmation than this. This right here, this animal, it looks like there's more than one. Uh, the argument, I suppose, is that this is the front of the cat and this is the back of the cat. Maybe not. It looks like there may be more than one, but you can tell right here, th these appear to be front legs curled inward, going back like, like cat's paws, chicken feet, as you already saw, fly backwards. This looks like the hind thigh of a mammal of some sort, presumably a cat. I can't believe this is, if this is my career, ladies and gentlemen, this is what my life has amounted to thus far, dissecting a video of whether or not someone grilled a cat on a barbecue and arguing with people that think it's a chicken. Sometimes I, I think about opening a sandwich shop and just saying, look, <laughs> it's practical and everybody loves a good roast beef with cheddar. So here I go, just for you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe it's fair to say confirmed. I'm going to leave it there. Next segment will be coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. So smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Man, I got to tell you guys, I, 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 a day goes by that people are saying they can't find the show. They don't find the videos. YouTube doesn't recommend them. So I really need your help. If you think I'm doing a good job, I got to, you know, we, we need you guys to share the videos wherever you can in whatever way possible, because I think honestly, that's the only reason this show still exists. Thank you all. Uh, become a member at TimCast.com. I'll give you one last uh, um, call to action, I suppose I could say. The only reason this show is possible and TimCast IRL and everything we're doing is possible, uh, Cast Brew Coffee, uh, music and all that, is because you guys are members. Uh, we are working to grow and build a bigger network that exists beyond me. Pop Culture Crisis, if you guys aren't familiar, 130,000 subscribers now. So we're getting there. We're not as big as some of the other competition, but it's important that there exists alternatives in this space. And so with your support as members, we're able to do this. If we didn't have you as you guys as members, I tell you what we'd be doing. This morning show would exist. Absolutely. And nothing else. Without the Timcast members, what I would likely be doing is 
living out of a, a class A camper, which is basically a tour bus. But, you know, it's like the big bus doing the morning show via Starlink, driving around. And that would be it. And it's for one simple reason, not because there's not more that I would want to do, but because the cost of infrastructure for Tim Cast IRL is massive. And it really comes down to support staff, uh, co-hosts and all this stuff. And so the memberships allow Tim Cast IRL to exist as a show. And it's a it's a large show. But um, it is a challenge every day when I know that we're being censored and it makes it challenging to maintain. We you know, we are we're at this point where we, we have to bring on new members uh, to support the show and make the show possible. But with the censorship, it makes it harder to market. So we have to spend money on marketing and it's it's an uphill battle. It really is. But thanks to you guys, we are able to make all of it possible. So thank you all so much for helping us remain independent here at TimCast.com. Stick around. The next segment coming up at 4 p.m. Oh, boy. Taylor Swift's endorsement backfires. Well, I got to give it to Trump, I guess. This is why he said he hates Taylor Swift. Thanks all for hanging out. We'll see y'all at 4 p.m. Smash the like button. Follow me on X at TimCast, and we'll see y'all then.